Uh, so hi, my name's Aaron. Um, I'm working on a project called Clams App, which is a browser UI for uh, call lightning nodes. And um, so I've built a whole heap of tooling around connecting to lightning nodes from the browser. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, so yeah, I thought I'd talk a bit about that experience and get you uh, get everyone set up on on how you can uh, build uh, web apps that securely connect to call lightning nodes. Uh, so I, I did try to get everything running in the replit here, but it's kind of a bit tricky because it requires uh, non-secure connections uh, to work correctly. Uh, so we can kind of just reference and, and, and link from this. Um, but I figured what we'll do is we'll go through, get like this kind of app running connected to a node, and I can talk a bit more about how it works um, under the hood. So um, I'm going to just like go over here, click over to um, this repo here called uh, Create Core LN, core LN App, um, and we can just go ahead and uh, clone it. So yeah, git clone, um, clone the repo. Uh, actually, I better just check which uh, directory I'm in. Um, so yeah, whichever uh, directory you'd like to install it into, just uh, git clone in there. Um, that'll bring down the repo. Um, and if you haven't already as well, um, download uh, Polar. Um, there's a link to it in there. Uh, it's kind of just like a, a way for setting up like Lightning Reg Test Networks um, and has like kind of a, a, a nice UI around that. Um, so we can uh, CD, uh, CD into the Create Call of LN app. Um, and then we just need to install the dependencies, uh, so npm i. Um, if anyone's kind of struggling, just, just let me know and we can, I can pause for a sec. Um, so that'll install the dependencies, um, and then we can run npm run dev, and that'll start uh, the app that I have built here. Um, and then you can uh, go and uh, open this up in your browser. And then you should see something like this, it's a little bit rough. Um, but it gives you kind of all the core UI elements you need to, to connect to a node. Um, so we'll go through that. Um, does anyone not have Polar installed that wants to, to try this out? Has everyone got Polar already? We're all good. So I'll open up Polar. Um, if you don't have uh, a reg test set up already, um, I've got one here that I use for that I use for some testing. If you don't have one already, you can have a look uh, in the presentation. Um, I've got this basic polar.zip. Um, so you can just download that and, and port that in and that'll give you just like a really basic reg test kind of already set up and ready to go. Um, so yeah, this is just a really simple reg test. We've just got an LND node, two core, core lightning nodes, uh, and an eclair node. Um, and so we'll start that up. And we actually need to um, like customize the, the core lightning uh, configuration to allow connecting over a WebSocket. So we're going to be connecting to the node directly over a WebSocket. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about the other connection options for when you're like running production apps. Um, so there might be a better way of doing this, but the way I've been doing this is opening up Docker. And you can see it running in there. Uh, you can open it up uh, in your text edit editor. And this is just the Docker compose file that, that spins up uh, Polar. And what we want to do is for one of the uh, core Lightning nodes, um, in this case Bob, uh, we want to do this experimental WebSocket port here and expose a port. The number can be sort of any valid port number, um, and we just want to expose that there, um, as well as down here in export and ports. Um, so if anyone's following along, let me know if if we're going a little too fast here. Um, but what that's doing is um, usually Lightning nodes don't expose a WebSocket port, they just expose a TCP port. Um, but from browsers, we can only use WebSockets. Um, and there's ways around this in production apps, but just for this kind of local setup, we're just going to like connect directly to that. Um, so you, 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 you make those modifications and save the file, uh, and then head back over to Polar. And if you stop that, and rerun it again, it'll, it'll run uh, with those new uh, configuration options. Uh, and the next thing we want to do, we want to get the information to, to connect to the node. So we need the node public key and the port that we're connecting to. 
Um, so you can see on the info panel here for Bob, uh, we have the public key. We can copy that over and go over to the app, uh, paste that in there, and then we're running it on localhost and ports are 7272. Um, and so we can go ahead and try and connect. Uh, and so that's connected directly to that, that Polar node. Um, and the browser has uh, an ID, which is like a node public key. Now I'll talk a little bit more about like kind of what's happening um, there, but conceptually I think of it like we're spinning up a very ultra light lightning node in the browser um, that allows us to connect as a, just a regular peer to, to that node. Um, the next part we have is we need to allow permissions on what the browser can do with that node. So there's a concept called runes, it's similar to macaroons in LND, and it basically just defines like um, anyone who has this room can, you know, do certain things on the node. Um, so to do that, we go over to Bob, and in the actions, we will uh, launch the CLI for that. Um, and there's links and everything uh, in, in the talk there for, for um, this is using the commando method um, of, of interacting with the node. Uh, so I'll just show you, like, the... Um, the commands first and then we can talk a little bit more about it. So lightning CLI, commando room, and for simplicity we can just go for that and that'll create what they call an unrestricted kind of like admin room. Um, in production or you know the people using your app would more likely uh, scope that room to certain things. Like you might want just like a read-only one so it just shows balance and can list payments but can't make any transactions. Um, this room is like god mode on your uh, on your node, so you, you wouldn't want to do that on a mainnet node, um, but it's it's okay for just testing here, just to see. Um, and yeah, so I kind of want to get get you guys to the point where you you have this kind of running, and and then we can try doing calling some methods on the node. So we might want to call uh, the get get info RPC method. If we request that, um, we can see the result uh, in the browser there. Um, obviously, in your app, you're not going to be just displaying it like this, but it's just a good way to get up and running, and then you can start thinking about. Um, the things you can do. Um, so you can call, you know, any of the RP with this room, you can call any of the RPC methods on that node. Um, so you can listen to gossip, you can do all, all sorts of things, on-chain transactions, off-chain transactions. Um, so there's lots of, you know, web apps that could be built um, where, you know, you might focus on a specific part uh, of, of what Core Lightning's doing. So some ideas, you know, might be like a liquidity ads dashboard or something like that. Um, and so you could go and connect your node and just look at offers, create offers and, and things like that. Um, or you might want to do a, you know, a whole UI like we're doing at Clams. Um, so that's kind of like the practical aspect of it. I can kind of help anyone out getting connected, but um, we can talk through how it sort of works as well a little bit more um, under the hood, because it's kind of interesting. Um, so we went through Clams. Um, so yeah, why, why would you want to, you know, what are the, the previous work, actually? We can start there on Core Lightning web apps. Um, there's a guy, JB55, he was doing a lot of interesting Core Lightning stuff. He's kind of, I think he's pretty focused on Dumbass, which is a, a Noster app at the moment. Um, but I'll link there if you want to check it out. He really goes through his, like, thinking on, on this way of, like, communicating with nodes um, from the browser. And he built a whole heap of stuff out, LN Link, like an iOS app. Um, he had this kind of, like, cool serverless checkout thing where you could do a checkout for your node and all the information needed um, to retrieve an invoice from your node was included in the URL. Um, and he built this LN socket library, uh, which we initially started using, but found we needed a bit more functionality. So um, I ended up writing a library called LN, LN message, which does similar stuff to LN socket, but um, a little bit more robust and has a few more features. Um, so yeah, what's interesting about web apps, like building Lightning web apps, um, well, there's no need to worry about App Store censorship. Um, you use the browser as a distribution method, and you can get your your app to a, to anyone that has a device that runs a browser, which is which is most most devices. Um, you've got faster iterations. You're not waiting for um, for App Store approval. So you know if a bug comes through, you can get it fixed and have it out in in half an hour, um, which is great for just experimenting um, and iterating on that. Um, like I said before, works on any device that has a web browser. Uh, it's quite lightweight. It's only, you know, depending on our app, depending on how many routes you're loading and things like that, but between two and four megabytes, um, whereas a lot of apps, you know, on a mobile might be something like 80 megabytes, because we're making use 
of the fact that the browser is already there, as, a, as a, you know, so most, of, most of the work is done by the browser. Um, and you can build progressive web apps. Um, yeah, I was in the Mutiny talk, they're working on that as well, and, and it basically just functions like a native app. Um, under the, well, it, it functions on the, on the front end, it looks like a, a native app, but it's actually just a browser app under the hood. Um, so yeah, talking about how it works a little bit more. Um, we've got like a lightning peer connection using encrypted messages, which is the LM message library, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more. And then remote RPC calls uh, using bearer tokens called runes that have fine grained uh, permission control. Uh, so a user can you know, log into your app um, and you know, they're not trusting the app to do anything more than what the runes allow them to. So it kind of, the users can define what the app um, can do on their node. Um, and yes, yeah, some of the alternatives to, to LN Message and this way of doing things is LN Socket, which is the same way of doing things. Um, but if you're writing stuff not in JavaScript, um, LN Socket, I believe, compiles down to all, all sorts of different languages. So that can be handy if you're not building uh, JavaScript apps, but you want to do the same um, way of connecting to nodes, more like native stuff. Um, and then there's Web LN, uh, something like Albi, and they kind of do the process of connecting to the nodes and they just expose an interface. Uh, globally in the browser, um, so that's where you can build, you know, web apps on Lightning, but uh, not to a specific implementation or anything like that. All right, so LM message. Um, yeah, like I said before, it's conceptually can thought of as spinning like an ultra ultralight Lightning node in the browser. All it knows how to do is basically speak Lightning. It, it, it can connect to peers just like your any other node can connect to peers, and it understands the handshake and the the encryption, the noise protocol, encryption protocol that the Lightning Network uses. Um, so it can initiate connections to peers, um, and it can send and receive messages to the peers. Um, and what it actually does is sets all the feature flags and the init message to zero. So it's just when it connects to a node, it's just saying like, "Hey, uh, yeah, I'm connecting, but I don't, re I don't really support anything. I don't support support channels or any of these kinds of things." Um, and so you can see, see here the. Uh, the, this is what it looks like. Um, we can actually even we can even, even do it live here um, to see it. I think it's list peers. And we want to find the one with all the zeros. Yeah, there it is there. So that's the peer 039F132. And we should see that over here, 039 F132. So it just shows like, like a regular peer, um, and and your 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 lightning node doesn't really distinguish um, from any other node besides the, the features that it advertises. Um, an LM message will keep the connection alive, does all the handles the ping pong requests, uh, it implements the Bolt One base protocol. Um, and currently it's only deserializing init messages, ping pong, and commander messages, um, but you can extend it to handle any lightning message. So you could use LM message to connect to any node and you can listen to all the gossip that's happening um, on that node. You could display like some sort of dashboard of the gossip or something if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, you need, you'd need to extend the library um, to be able to deserialize those messages, but LM message will encrypt and un unencrypt those, those messages and yeah, implements Bolt 8, which is encrypted and authenticated transport. Uh, so, yeah, there's a few different ways you can connect. Uh, you can do a direct connection using WebSockets, which is what I demonstrated in that app there, which is what I tend to do when locally testing. Um, that's very simple, it's just creating a direct WebSocket to the exposed WebSocket port on the node. Um, but only Core Lightning has this ability currently where they expose an experimental uh, WebSocket port. Uh, but it may become a standard at some point where we'll see other implementations allow that as a, I think there's some specs that I've linked to here, um, or some comments where they're talking about um, introducing that to the vaults um, as like a, a, a natural spec. Um, so, Hopefully in the future we see that happen. Um, and so it works, you can connect directly in the browser if you're not running TLS, if you're just running in a HTTP environment, you can connect directly to um, a WebSocket. Uh, but the problem comes if when you go to deploy that to production, you really need to deploy it uh, over HTTPS and browsers do not allow insecure connections. Um, so the option there is you can get a TLS cert for your node 
um, which is a little bit tricky at the moment. Um, but there are some like proposals again to have that just come out of the box, and then we could have production apps connecting directly to nodes on the network with with nothing in the middle. Um, so yeah, the and so another option is is direct connection using TCP so talk sockets. So if you're using like a a Node.js, if you're building a Node.js app, Node.js has access to TCP sockets. Uh, React Native also has access to TCP sockets, so um, you can just correct, connect directly uh, to a core Lightning node uh, without needing to expose the WebSocket port or anything. You're just connecting like any other node would. Um, so if you're building a bit more something on the back end, like an idea for that might be a service that um, you know you're running a Node.js server. Someone can give you a room to create an invoice. Um, and the connection details, and then you can build like a, a permissionless or like a non-custodial like NLN URL, like uh, Lightning address or something like that, where the Node.js server just, you know, when it when it has a request for an LN URL, it will just spin up a connection to your node directly, uh, call the RPC, create an invoice, and then forward that back. Um, so that's 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 um, JB55 did implement something like that, I believe, um, but no one's really expanded much on that. Um, so that's another interesting kind of thing if you want to build a Node.js app. And if you scope the room to just being able to create invoices and it's rate limited, um, then you know that's pretty pretty good uh, from an end user point of view. Um, and then the other option, uh, which is what we're using at Clams at the moment, um, is we do a proxy connection. So we proxy the, the WebSocket connection from the browser to a server, and then that server creates a TCP connection uh, directly to the node, and then it's just shuffling encrypted binary, binary track it, uh, traffic between the two. Um, so this is trustless, but it is a, a central point of failure. If, if our server was to go down, um, our apps users would need to either pick another proxy server um, or connect directly to a node if they have TLS. Um, so yeah, something to think about when deploying deploying an app and, and how you're going to connect, and it's hard to get the UX right around that. Um, yeah, so the JS environments that LM Message supports, uh, yeah, browser apps, Node.js apps, and React Native apps. So if you're building anything like that and you want to connect to core Lightning nodes, um, LM Socket may, may be a good good choice. Uh, and then we've got the Commando plugin, which is the other part of it. Um, so LM Message can connect to any Lightning implementation, um, but at the moment, core Lightning is the only one that you can do some interesting things with. Um, the other implementations don't have a way to allow a peer to, to call um, RPC methods on your node. And that's what Commando is. It started out um, just as a separate plugin. I think it was kind of experimental. Um, and then they put it into the core code base. And yeah, Commando is basically saying, um, initially it was thought of like you might give it to a friend, like a room to a friend, and their node can connect to your node and, and do some things for you. Like maybe they, um, you know, maybe it might be used as some sort of watchtower thing or something like that. Um, but it was JB55 that started thinking, well, a browser could actually just connect to it. Um, and this is, um, it doesn't require installing anything extra on your node, and that, that's what's great about um, this way of doing things. You don't need to install an extra bit of software like you might need to with um, like the REST APIs and stuff that things like um, Ride the Lightning use. Um, so this is a way that you know, anyone who has a core Lightning node, uh, they can uh, expose this interface and uh, apps can call methods on it. Uh, so yeah, the runes, um, they're the way to you know, define who has access to your node and what they can do on it. Um, and yeah, so we pasted in like a full access room, um, but there's you know, kind of a language around here, you know, command over room restrictions and you can rate limit and um, you can restrict it to a certain node ID. So what we actually do in clams is we take this, this browser ID that's generated and we keep that as a persistent uh, node ID. So um, just to add a little extra layer of safety, you can restrict your room to that node ID. So that means you can pass that room around and it's kind of safe because uh, for a person to use that room, they would need to have the private key that's running in memory in browser. So not perfect safety, but it just makes it a little bit safer passing around rooms uh, when you want to connect, uh, connect your you know, a browser or something like that to your node. Um, yeah, so that there's a little bit more details about that. Um, so yeah, that's the general gist of it. Um, I don't know, has anyone got it up and running, or is anyone up and running or needs some help? I mean, no one's running. Um, anyone have any questions around this?
Um, I can go into more detail about, about some things if you want. Or... Yeah, um, at the moment you, you, you can't revoke a rune, it's, it's, um, it's like a bare instrument, so if you were to create this admin rune and accidentally leak it or something like that, anyone could uh, connect to your node and drain it or do whatever they, do whatever they want with it, and you can't really uh, revoke it. So I've been talking with the Core Lightning team of maybe adding another um, RPC where you could say, hey, like, yeah, I don't want this room to be valid anymore um, and, and basically revoke it. Um, so that's one thing. Um, another interesting thing could be kind of like spending limits, which is not possible to encode in, in the room pot at the moment. Um, so it'd be nice if I was connecting to an app that maybe I don't know very well. Maybe I say it can spend, you know, 100,000 sats total or, you know, um, 10,000 a day or something like that. Um, similar in its way, I think Albi has a similar kind of system just encoded in their, in their software. So it'd be great to be able to restrict in that way. Um, and I can imagine then you could, you could split your node out into like multiple accounts or something. So you can imagine like a family running a node and, you know, you know, one, one of the children could get, uh, you know, you could load them up with the app with a rune that allows them to spend a certain amount over a certain time and kind of segment the node. Um, LND has like concepts that are similar to that, I believe, where you can just kind of like allow someone to see a small view of your node, maybe not all the balances, not all the payments and things like that. Um, so yeah, it'd be great to have a bit more power around that. Um, but yeah, you need to work with the, the core lightning team around that one. Oh, this went a lot quicker than I thought it would. Um, well, maybe I can show around clams and we can we can play around with some payments. Um, um, I can show you sort of how it looks with it with the UI. So this is what our UI looks like for, for connecting a node, and this is how we're approaching uh, the UX around it. Um, so you get the, the box there for a connection address. Um, so I'll go back over and I'll start over here again. So we'll get the public key. Uh, it's at local host, 7272. And we have this kind of, so by default, we'll just connect to our proxy server, so when it's running in production, um, it doesn't matter whether the user um, has TLS or anything anything like that, um, but we have these kind of options where you can you could select a different proxy if you know someone else running a proxy server that you would rather use, um, or you can do a direct connection you know, over TLS or non-TLS. Um, so we can connect there. Um, and yeah, we've created some buttons here for to make it easy to um, to, to paste in these room commands. So we've got like a read-only one. If I click on that, it copies it to the clipboard. Um, we've got one that you know, gives full functionality of the app. Um, and then we've got like an admin one, but just restricted to the public key up here and rate limited. Um, so usually we recommend going for the, for the clams one. And we can go in here. And I've got that uh, on my clipboard there. And you can see it's quite long. Um, but it's basically saying you're restricted to the public key um, of, that the browser's using and it's like listing, all right, it can call these methods, it can sign messages, it can list invoices requests and so on and so forth. And then that fits out a much larger uh, room which we can grab here. Paste that in there. Um, I built a library that decodes the room um, client side. You can do that via the CLI but it's better to not have to make a network request. 
So you click that, you can kind of see it's a little bit more sort of human language of what this room is encoding. Um, still a lot of work to do here to make the UX really nice. Um, and yep, so then we're in with the app. Um, let's see if we can get that now. The, and so we're connected. It's uh, got, our, got the balance from our node. Um, we can like list some of these kind of previous payments. Uh, it looks like the, the exchange rate API isn't loading. Um, so yeah, maybe we can like send some transactions. Uh, I'll just copy this down a little bit. Um, so maybe maybe Dave, we can create an invoice for Dave. Close. Um, so yeah, normally you would like scan a QR or something like that, but we can just go for send. Um, it recognizes the lightning invoice, gives you a, a summary of the amounts, what the invoice is for, um, when it expires, and we can send payment. And so that sent that there. Um, we can go the other way around and see what the payment looks like here. So uh, we'll receive some sats. Create a new invoice, and that's connected to the node. Grab, grab the invoice from the node, and, and we get like the nice sort of QR, and that's pending and, and waiting for a response there. So we can copy that over here, and we can get Dave uh, to pay the invoice. Uh, let's see if I can get these. So we can see it at the same time. Yeah, as you can see, it received the payment there. And it's paid over here. Um, some of the stuff we've been working on, uh, we got this bookkeeper accounting stuff. Um, so you can kind of see routing performance for your node. That's using all the, the bookkeeper RPCs that, uh, that Lisa did at uh, Core Lightning. Um, and you can go ahead and export uh, a Coinly uh, download. So you don't need to worry about all your accounting kind of stuff. You can just drop that into Coinly and your tax is done, which is kind of handy. Uh, we've been working on some bulk 12 offers stuff. Uh, so we can go ahead and create an offer. Or we can make it an any invoice. And then we got a bulk 12 offer for, for any amount. Um, I'll have to actually enable offers on the other node, I think, before I'll be able to pay it. So let's just do that. So enabled offers on this one. But we need to do it for Carol, I believe. No, Dave. Stop this restart. So we should be able to. Actually, I'm not sure if Polar can handle uh, Bolt 12. Probably not. So we'll have to connect the other node. Socket port. I'll have to stop and restart. Connect another node over here.
All right, so we'll try and send an offer, see so if we can get that to work. So we'll copy the offer over here, bolt 12. Uh, it recognizes a bolt 12 offer. Uh, you got all the details of the offer there. It's kind of like LN URL pay. You can pay to a static invoice over and over. It asks you an amount. Touch no. Yeah, that's sent there. Um, and you'll be able to see here in the payments, um, you'll get like a list of all the payments that have come through for that offer. Um, so that's how we're thinking about the UX around offers. Um, but yeah, any questions on any of that? Um, when you are looking to see the payments that are associated with the bulk invoice, how would that work on the API? Is it if you look at like a description or something and that references some bulk 12 invoice or offer? Uh, yes, so in, in a payment it, it references like a, a label, I believe it is. Yeah, and then you can kind of connect that label up with the list of offers. Um, yeah, we're, we're currently working on like a refactoring all the kind of storage and stuff in here so that we can have the, you know, we use index in D, in, index DB to um, store all of these things. We'll be able to do sort of complex queries in the browser to match things up. But yeah, currently we're just kind of matching them up as we fetch all the data, fresh fetch the data from the node. Can you tell me what like major uh, features and functionality you'll be working on in the next six months? Yeah, yeah, so um, we're working on imp uh, working on extending uh, the accounting features uh, on this, so um, we're going to have some more charts you can break down by dates and, and see routing performance and APY performance. Um, we're working on some like profit and loss uh, exports for sort of like professional road runners. Uh, that may need uh, more detailed like statements for, for their investors and things like that. Um, so expanding the accounting stuff so you can really see the flow of SATs through your node and, and um, get a bit more visual uh, understanding of, of where the SATs are flowing through through the node. Um, so yeah, big focus on Bookkeeper. Um, we need to, this is just off-chain balance, so we need to uh, include an on-chain balance and send to on-chain and receive on-chain. Um, try and think about how we can make sort of like a unified balance around that. Um, what else are we thinking about? Uh, there's lots of little things. We want to improve the connection flow um, to be a lot easier. Uh, we want to talk to people like Greenlight or something like that or Voltage and, and maybe we can get, you know, if you don't, right now if you don't have a core lightning node, um, then this app is of no use to you, but maybe you can come and, and we can spin up a node programmatically for green light or voltage, connect to it, and you can be in and have a node running in the cloud and be connected to it pretty pretty fast. Um, so yeah, just making that UX a lot better I think would be good. Um, liquidity ads, dashboard, and channel management. Um, so the goal of the project is on, on desktop, you know, it's it has, has sort of more detailed features like channel management, things like that, sort of like Ride, ride the Lightning. Uh, but on mobile, you know, more of like payments on the go, kind of like a Zeus um, kind of setup. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of a lot of features in, in Core Lightning that we want to highlight and, and maybe improve the Bulk 12 uh, functionality as well over time. Um, maybe work on the UX and the designs of that. Uh, yeah, yeah. We can. We got dark mode and light mode, of course. Um, you can encrypt. You can encrypt your data, um, and that'll encrypt everything in storage. Um, and the next time you, you come back, um, it needs to be able. You know, if you if you do the wrong thing, it won't won't be able to decrypt any of your connection data. That adds a kind of another layer of safety um, to decrypt it and and um, uh, yeah, sort of protect your rune and connection uh, info. Uh, we, actually, we want to um, spend a bit more time on, so it's been built with uh, localization from the start so that it can be translated into multiple languages, currently only supporting English. Um, but yeah, if anyone wants to help out with some translations, we definitely want to make this much more international uh, for sure. Um, it shouldn't be too hard to translate because we kind of thought of that from the start, but, but yeah.
Cool. Well, I guess we can wind up a little early. Sweet. Thanks.